Sir, of course, thank you so much for joining us in the studio and we will come back to you. We just want to bring in our reporters who fanned out across key locations across India. Right now, we have with us uh, Siddharth Sibbal, our principal diplomatic correspondent. We have with us Disha Shah from Maharashtra. Idris Sloan, who is joining us from Srinagar. We have Siddharth MP, who is joining us from Chennai as well. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us on the show this morning. I want to come to you first, Disha. I wanted to understand, of course, you've been covering all phases of the election from Maharashtra. I want to understand from you, where, where do things stand right now? How is the race to power shaping up there? Good morning to you and the viewers who are watching us right now. Uh, it is, of course, a very big day because, uh, and especially here in Maharashtra, this election was very closely watched for. Uh, firstly, it sends 48 seats, uh, which is the second highest uh, to uh, Lok Sabha and that is why any election, the result will be very crucial today and this was first election where uh, it was under the new government. We saw after 2019 the party split and uh, it was entirely a new government that conducted elections and that is why the stakes are high for big leaders today. If you talk about Uddhav Thakre to Ekna Shinde to Sharad Pawar and also Ajit Pawar and Devendra Fadnavis. So how the results pan out will definitely shape entire political landscape uh, for uh, the uh, you know upcoming uh, years to come but at this given point in time the exit polls have predicted uh, that uh, the BJP might make a, a win here uh, across Maharashtra but when you talk about Mumbai the Shiv Sena led Uddhav Thakre might have a strong hold uh, considering uh, Mumbai always has been a Shiv Sena bastion for the last 25 years so this of course is very very important to, to watch out for. On, secondly, we also saw to ensure uh, that uh, uh, BJP uh, also tries and wins with some margin. They uh, fielded uh, for the very first time some high profile candidates. We saw a direct contest between Piyush Goel who contested for the very first time. We saw uh, senior lawyer Ujwal Nikam also contesting for the very first time. Uh, we saw a direct contest uh, in Baramati constituency which always have been a Sharad Pawar bastion but this is the first time in decades that right. we saw the two family members fighting against each other. So this is something which is quite important and at 8 o'clock we'll see the counting uh, that will start and right. we are just outside one of the counting centers. I just want to show you the kind of police deployment that is being done to ensure that the counting happens very smoothly, efficiently and transparency without any untoward incident. Absolutely indeed, Disha, do continue to stay on with us. This is going to be a power-packed day and Maharashtra is one of those swing states and we'll be talking a lot about, you know, as to how politics, of course, pans out there. But let me also bring in my colleague from Chennai, Siddharth MP, who's joining us live at this moment. Siddharth, this is going to be a pivotal moment for South Indian politics. The pollsters, if we were to, you know, go strictly according to what the pollsters are predicting, they say that the Bharatiya Janata Party is expected to make inroads in places where it has not had any kind of a political standing before. Give us a sense of what the mood is like at this moment in both Tamil Nadu and in Kerala, according to the numbers that are being put out by the pollsters for the time being. Hello and good morning, Mohammed. Let me start by telling that, uh, you know, the South generally votes very differently, particularly when it comes to Kerala and Tamil Nadu. The southern states vote very differently when compared to their counterparts up north. So this is why this region is always watched with a great deal of excitement, because these are two states where, you know, uh Tamil Nadu specifically, this is one state where the national parties or the parties with a pan-India footprint such as the BJP and Congress are part of a minor, you know, they are part of a, an alliance where they are the minor partner. So that's how things are over here. So all these national parties that uh, are here in Tamil Nadu, they are a smaller ally in a larger umbrella alliance that's built because this is a region specifically with regional parties that are language based parties regional based parties that have a very strong ideology and they've been ruling the state alternatively for 50 years so it is amid this landscape that the BJP is hoping to make inroads in Tamil Nadu 
Of course, what they see is a political vacuum and the absence of extremely tall leaders like J. Jayalalitha and M. Karnandi over the last, you know, uh, 10 years we've seen their demise and that is something that has opened the floor in, in the opinion of the BJP for them. So they see this as an opportune time for them to also field their own candidates, own leaders and actually test the waters here. Right. And this time, of course, this is something that BJP sees as a prestige battle because in Kerala, they hope to open their account with an M uh, MP and in Tamil Nadu, they hope to ratchet up both their vote share and the number of seats that they can win because last time around, they did not win, uh, you know, it was only their ally who won, right. but none of the BJP candidates won. So this is an election where we have to watch whether the South actually accepts the BJP and, you know, there is a sort of new blooming of the lotus down south, if at all, moment. And also whether the south, you know, the BJP has the kind of agenda which the people in south will accept. That's not something that we'll have to watch out for him. The southern states is going to be a crucial bit of, uh, you know, how this election unfolds. If the BJP wants to win more than 400 seats, it is in states such as Tamil Nadu and Kerala where they need to make some incremental gains. Right. And with that being said, let's also bring in our correspondent Sanjay Bhadra, who's joining us from Kolkata now. Thank you so much for joining us. I just want to understand what's your assessment of the high percentage of voting is in West Bengal. How do you assess that? See, Bengal has always been a, a, a politically, a politically very conscious and uh, participation in the voting uh, has been a hallmark in the, Bengal poli uh, in the Bengal political landscape. And this time too, we have seen, what we have seen is that in Bengal, a large number of people came out to vote, uh, vote this time and the percentage uh, is more than 80%. Uh, but what is very interesting uh, this time is that uh, BJP is hoping for a very incremental gain in this uh, uh, Bengal political scenario. Uh, they had uh, 18, 18 seats in 2019, but they want to, uh, they, they are hoping for, and in, in fact, uh, exit poll has predicted a very good uh, result for them uh, and, uh, and a beating for the ruling party uh, to, uh, Trinamool Congress. But Trinamool Congress is very hopeful of uh, one particular thing that they will, uh, they, will ta they will increase their tally from 22 uh, to anything between 26 to 30. Uh, it's uh, maybe in a couple of hours we can see uh, what exactly happens uh, with the result. But one thing is very sure that the participation of voters in this election has been very interesting. And one more thing I would like to add is that Bengal has always been a very politically uh, political, uh, violent Violence prone, uh, Bengal always witnessed a violence prone uh, election. But this time there was a, uh, there was a ray of hope uh, in the Bengal political scenario uh, when we have seen uh, that there has been a very less violence and a huge deployment of a, uh, right. a central force, uh, nearly a thousand company of central force. Uh, has ensured right. a very uh, violence-free vote. Absolutely indeed. Now, West Bengal is going to be a very crucial state to, in fact, watch out for because that's one of the states where the BJP is hoping that they, of course, make some gains. And uh, this, is, this is a crucial moment in the lead-up to the counting. Another 38 minutes from now, we, of course, expect the counting process to begin. But what you're looking at on your screens are these images of Laddus and other Swedes that have already been ordered by some of these political parties who are hoping that they will make a big bonanza today. Uh, Mr. Dilip Cherian is still with us. Mr. Cherian, this is uh, you know, going to be a crucial bit of a battle that will be watched very closely. The Bharatiya Janata Party is hoping to make some inroads both in the southern part of India and also in the eastern part of India. I want you to weigh in on the numbers that are being put out by these pollsters where they are predicting some really big inroads being made by the Bharatiya Janata Party, which would effectively mean that the divide that we saw between the North and the South in terms of how the voters vote and the issues that they have may vanish. Do you think that the pollsters have got it right when they say that the BJP will get the kind of vote share and the seats in both in Kerala and in Tamil Nadu? You know, I have kind of hinted at the answer before. My reading from other independent pollsters don't seem to suggest these kind of robust figures for the BJP in either Tamil Nadu, Kerala or Bengal. Um, the, the general, the, the large mass of pollsters seem to have indicated that these strong uh, incumbency wave, I will call it, uh, mm -hmm. for the BJP seems to have penetrated into the South. But as we've seen before, the South tends to watch, to watch and wait and does not vote along with the North in most elections. So if it does vote, it will be a significant change. And as you said, it might indicate that the entire country is unified in one kind of waving activity. And 
that's uh, that's a significant political shift which we will then right. uh, celebrate at the end of the uh, end of today. All right, that of course is if those numbers which the pollsters are predicting, of course, still stand good. These are some fantastic images. Hey, you know, the political parties are getting ready for the celebrations, but still the battle is just halfway there. The counting of the votes, the crucial bit still needs to happen. Absolutely, Saleh. And we also have with us Siddhant Sibyl, who is joining us from New Delhi. Siddhant, uh, thank you for joining us. Of course, there's a lot that's happened. I want to understand how has some of the dominant issues in, this, in, in the past phases affected voting patterns? What is the mood like on ground? What can you tell us? Well, Delhi is uh, the centre in many ways today as the results will come out. We will see celebration visuals. I'm standing at the headquarters of the BJP where tents are being put up uh, as of now. I'll show you some of the action which has already started here on the ground. Uh, my camera person Sanjeet will show you uh, how uh, the situation is planning out. So what is happening on the ground is they are planning uh, yagnas here, puja. Uh, here, uh, uh, my camera person will just show you. And uh, we know that uh, uh, today, of course, the results will start coming from 8 a.m. onwards, Indian Standard Time. It's approximately 30 minutes from now. But these are the visuals. Uh, these are the visuals from outside the BJP headquarters here in Delhi. Uh, we do expect a uh, uh, lot of celebrations, both uh, uh, the opposition and uh, uh, the BJP, which is uh, the ruling party so far have planned mega events but it all depends on the numbers the numbers the final figures will be out uh, by 3 p.m indian right. standard time it was a two month long process we saw yesterday how uh, the election commission also held its pc and gave those big numbers as to how many people voted in this mega election that lasted for two months all right well Siddhant, of course we'll come to you uh, again through the course of the day to get all the updates as well Thank you so much, Siddhant, uh, Mr. Dilip Cherian, as well as Disha. Thank you so much for joining us on the show right now.